Many people see identifying a book as being the finishing stage of bookbinding, putting a title on the book, at least on the spine so it can be found on the shelf. This can be done either lettering directly onto the covering material or applying a label that's lettered off the book. Most cloth-covered books are case-bound and the titling is done directly on the covering material before casing in while the case is flat and can fit into a hot foiling machine. For leather-covered books, the titling can be done directly on the leather after covering. This is one of the most demanding skills in bookbinding, especially if done with gold leaf and individual hand letters. In production work, it's much easier to make a leather label off the book to fix onto the spine. Either way, most methods require specialist finishing tools, which most amateur bookbinders don't have. Another label option that is often being used in commercial bookbinding is paper labels. It's much more common for cloth-covered books, but can also be used with leather-covered books. Other ways to decorate book covering materials, which are common both commercially and with amateurs, is printing directly onto the covering material using either digital printing such as inkjet or laser printing, and screen printing is common commercially. In recent times, craft-oriented bookbinders have come up with some really interesting ways to decorate books using HTV, which is heat transfer vinyl. This avoids the costly capital outlay of foiling machines and brass type. The durability will not be as high, but the results can be very good. I have no experience with this last technique. I do often print on Arbolave book cloth with my inkjet printer. The best way to know if you can print on your particular book cloth is to give it a go. When designing labels, I keep things simple. I follow the basic advice in Modern Bookbinding by Alex Vaughan. I vaguely try and put the lettering in one of the four shapes he suggests. If the title starts with the and ends in a short word, then the lozenger shape works. If it's the something or other of something else, then the rectangle works. You get the idea. Of course, this is for lettering that's horizontal. I'll talk about vertical lettering on the spine in a bit. I typeset the labels in Microsoft Word. I insert a single cell table and drag the table to the size I want. I then format the contents of the single table cell to center horizontally and vertically. I usually leave a thin frame which I cut just outside of. I normally bold the font and use a font that's appropriate for the book and I usually use all capitals. I also make a number of variations such as font size and rectangle size. And I might make more than one of each as spares. And I print more than one label on a single sheet of paper to save money on that expensive Mohawk paper. I have two printers, an A4 black and white laser printer and a color A3 inkjet and the details are in the description. I asked Siri which produced the most durable prints and she didn't know. I prefer the black and white laser printer. I think the only advice I have is to use what you have or have access to. I printed plenty of labels on an inkjet before I got the laser printer. If you're worried about which will fade the most due to light exposure, then your books need to be protected from the light rather than worrying about the labels. The paper used is very important to the final look. A dense, opaque quality paper should be used. I prefer a slightly warm tone, but the colour will be a design choice based on the overall design of the book. My favourite paper for labels is Mohawk Superfine White in an eggshell finish, 118 GSM. But you just have to use what you have available. For a long time, I used ordinary printer paper. I get asked a lot about coating labels for durability. I think some people underestimate paper. Paper doesn't like water, so I often wax burnished paste or marbled paper to give some moisture protection. Otherwise, I don't think paper or the printing needs protection, and I've never sealed or coated paper labels in the past. But in the Randy Silverman article about the conservation pamphlet structure, at the very end, he mentions making labels by Xerox. Yes, the article was written in the 80s. 
he suggests improving the abrasion resistance with an application of Clusal G dissolved in ethanol. This is a very specialized product and not many people will have it, but I do. It's mostly used for leather consolidation. But what the hell, I made up a 2% solution and applied it to a label. I couldn't tell the difference. Maybe it makes a difference, but I'm not going to routinely start using it. Maybe for 80s xerographic images, it made a difference. So, to proactively answer the flood of questions, no, I don't use Mod Podge or any other art sealant, spray or paint on. I don't think it's needed. But if you want to do it, go ahead. But these sealants are notorious for yellowing with age, regardless of what the marketing says. I'm undecided if I'll use the Clusal G in the future. If you do want to protect the label, there is something that makes a big difference and it looks really polished too. Make a recess for the label to sit down in. I mostly use this for labels on the front cover. This is easy enough to do. You can do it on the spine too. I've only done it on the spine with square back bindings with a rigid spine stiffener. I've heard of people scoring a shape the size of the label and peeling back some of the grey or millboard. I don't think this is the best way. Depending on the board, you could end up with a real mess. The common way to do it is to laminate some card to board with a hole cut in the card slightly larger than the label. The card should be at least as thick, maybe slightly thicker than the label. I use 10 point or 300 GSM card, which is about 0.3 millimeters thick. If the back board is 1.6 millimeter board, for the front I use 1 millimeter board and laminate a piece of card to the inside, and then on the outside I laminate the same card with the hole cut out for the label to sit in. If the outside card is going to pull, the inside card will counter it and they add up to the same thickness as the backboard. I always keep the piece of card that came out of the hole. I trim it slightly, maybe a weak one millimeter, and when I cover the board, I first use a bone folder to press the cloth down into the recess, but then place the piece of card that came out of the hole in position and nip it for a while to get a nice crisp impression in the cloth. I've recently become aware that some people call this a, a label well. It's a rather catchy name and I like it. I'll use it in the future. I think the name label well is used at North Bennett Street School and that's why the name is spreading. If you know the origins of this name, please let me know. Now what about the lettering along the spine? Top to bottom or bottom to top? When I was younger, I liked bottom to top. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the rebellion of youth because overwhelmingly in the English world the titling goes top to bottom so that when you tilt your head to the right you can read the title running left to right. It has been pointed out that German books go the other way even if the title is in English. I don't know why and maybe this explains my younger self's attraction to this. Maybe it's genetic. These days I letter spines top to bottom unless I stuff it up which has been known to happen. If you want to waste an hour or two, look this up on the internet. A lot has been written about it. To apply the label, I use straight EVA or PVA. I lay my ruler above where I want to place it and position something like the 200mm mark in the centre of the panel where I'm going to place the label. If it's a quarter or a half binding, I centre the label on the board paper. If it's a full binding, I centre the label between the board joint and the foredge, which results in it being slightly towards the foredge. No one taught me this, I just do it because it looks right and it looks like what other people do. I've seen a few older books that used a clever trick to stop the paper labels falling off the book with age. The books were quarter covered with leather covering the spine. The paper labels wrapped around the spine over the spine covering leather and onto the boards a short distance. The label was applied after the spine was covered but before the boards were covered. This way the label was firmly held on by the board covering material. Even if the glue under the label failed, the label would be held on. And it even looks cool. I want to use this more often. I've only seen this in the wild over leather. 
but why not over cloth? In the one example I own, the paper remained attached but became very brittle due to either being acidic or becoming acidic due to the contact with the leather. Whatever the cause, the label on the spine is mostly gone. So that's it for paper labels. As usual, I've taken something simple and made it complex. I hope I've convinced you that paper labels look great and are worthy of use. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you are able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, cheerio.